In this video, I'm going to teach you guys my systems I use to edit YouTube videos in under 30 minutes. Yeah, it's insane what type of systems I've created and I guarantee you, you will not find these systems anywhere else. My name is Torsten Roscoe and without further ado, let's get into this video. So when I first start out editing my YouTube videos, I make sure everything is organized and I have all my assets I already need so I'm not constantly command I looking for all my stuff. We don't want that shit. We need to just focus on editing. And that's where kind of these folders come in. I have different folders for every spot. So like my A-roll, you can see here's my A-roll. We will be editing this in just a little bit. So you guys get the gif of it, but that's my A-roll. I have a B-roll one and a graphics one and a transition. And the way you can automate this entire process is first you wanna create your folders. So come down here to this little folder icon. You can create this and I'll, I can just name it folder one. And now here's the most important part. Once you have all these, so I recommend just copying mine and looking at mine. I'll just delete that. Come over to file and hit, where is it? Save as template. So what the save as template is going to do is now each and every single time when you open a new folder, so let's just say I hit save, I hit file, new project. It's gonna bring this up. You put your location. I'm just gonna type my project name and go to templates. Here's mine, mine is just this. And now when I create this, watch on the right side. It has all these folders. You can see how it has my A-roll, has B-roll, my graphics, transition, all these folders. And if you wanna use, if you constantly are using like the same sequence, you can put this. Mine I have, because I do reels and stuff and I'm a content creator, I do reels. So nine by 16, 4K resolution, YouTube as well. That is just the first part of how I completely automate everything. And the second thing I do is just grab my shit right out of the camera. So what I'm gonna be doing now is dragging all my footage into my timeline. I come in here and I just make sure just like so, bring these down. I always add more tracks. So if you hit add tracks, right click over here, you can just crank this a shit ton. That's what I like to do. And now I have a lot of space to room to go in. And I used to actually try to line these up and listen to it. But if you just hold these, make sure they're all on separate tracks. You can see how this audio track is only on this audio like track right here. Or this audio wave is on this one. Same way goes with this video is only on this one. Make sure they're on each their own layer. Highlight all of it. Right click. Hit synchronize. Hit OK. And it's it. Premiere is gonna do its magic. Boom, it's already synced perfectly for you. And I'm just gonna come in here and really quickly just cut this up just like so. And now the next thing I do immediately is because you can see that from your off camera, if you guys are running on a Sony camera or if you're running S-Log3 footage, you have this like really flat footage. Like, look, that's a really ugly <laughs> spot for me, but this is what it just looks like. And the way you can turn this off is by simply getting a conversion rut. I'm sure you already have been using a conversion rut by now, but if you aren't, I don't know what you have been doing. To get this conversion rut, make sure you have your elementary color on, come into basic color actions, and I will leave the LUTs that I use. I'll leave the conversion LUTs that you can get from Sony for absolutely free in the link description. So I just click on this one and now boom, it looks 20 times better. It's not done yet. You can see that it still needs a little tweaking, but right now it's super good. Now the next system I always develop is making sure everything is automated. So for instance, when you are trying to automate your color grading, not every single time you're gonna wanna come into here, oh, I'm gonna turn this one, turn this one, make the exposure a little better, contrast, like, no, we don't wanna do this each and every single time, it's just gonna waste a shit time. So what I do to get rid of that entire process is you create that once, so let's just say I like this, or I'm just gonna mess with the exposure right now. Let's say I like this lot. I'm gonna come up here, make sure you click on the elementary color, right click, and then come over to here and hit export.cube. Now you can name this and then hit save. It's gonna save that cube file. So now each and every single time you record and put this on like a similar footage or any type of footage, you can come into the creative, hit browse, find the one that you just did. So for instance, I'm gonna use mine. If I can just find it really quick, right here, right here, here. I'm gonna grab my film look because this is my LUT that's perfectly made for this. And now boom, it gives me a nice vibrant color. And if I want to, if this is too intense, I can down it, but I want it to be a lot more intense. So just like, so not too intense. So then it like 
makes my face look weird, but like just like so, so at least I look a little more whiter. And now boom, I have my color grading done. If you wanna get my LUTs, I'll leave them in the link in the description, but this is just how I automate my color grading process. Now, here is the next system that is an absolute game changer for anyone that is a content creator or editing videos. And so usually when you guys edit or chop up your footage, you usually will is like zoom in here, you'll find the spots, right? You see that like, oh, this needs to be cut, so I'll just cut this with the razor tool like so, and then delete this stuff just like so. That's usually what majority of people do. We're not gonna do that. We're gonna let Premiere Pro do that entirely for us. So I'm gonna just gonna undo these really quick, and let me show you how I do this. A little trick I found is you come up to the text tab, and if you go to the transcript, make sure you transcript transcribed it. There should be like a big blue button. Just hit that. Come to this filter thing, hit pauses, and then it's going to give you every single thing, every single part of your video that's a pause or a filler. See, it will even grab a filler if you don't talk very well. All you have to do is come over here. You can do like the minimum pause length. So for instance, if I wanted every cut to be extremely good and there's absolutely no pauses or anything, I can just crank this shit to the left. But I always run at about 1.5 because it gives you a nice little wiggle room. Sometimes Premiere, if you go all the way down, it cuts it harsh and you will actually miss out some of your words you're talking. So it sounds, it just is weird. So make sure you're at about 1.5. That works for me. I hit save and then here's the magic. Make sure you hit delete. It's on extract, not lift, hit delete all. Now it's gonna get rid of all, look at look at this. All of my cuts are already done for me. Now all I have to do, it looks like it messed up a little here, but that's fine. All I have to do now is go through this and cut it up by listening to it. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do. One thing I like to do really quick when I'm cutting up these videos is I use the keys on my keyboard, especially the key L. If you guys have that, it should be just automatically on L. And what it essentially does is when you hit L, you can listen to this. It speeds up the footage and that's what we're looking for because if you're allowing to speed up the footage, then you can see what parts you need to cut and everything. That's just like a little tip I like to do. Here's another trick I love to do when I'm trying to figure out like spots to do animations or if I do things like promote my packs for instance or something like that, I will stop, figure out that spot and then just hit M. It's gonna put a marker on it. Then I know when I'm done cutting up all this and I'm ready to animate my animations, I know exactly what spots in this entire video I need to just put it there so then I'm not re-looking over the entire footage. I just look at the marker, boom, I need to put something at least right there and then we're good to go. Okay, now that you have your entire video kind of chopped up and you are ready, ready for the next stage, I just wanna quickly point out that if you want keybinds exactly like this, like all I have to do to cut this empty space, instead of just using the razor tool, I would have to like kind of zoom in here. I would use the razor tool, cut and then that and then that. Like that would just wait, take way too much time. If you guys want actual good keybinds that I can just hit one click, watch, boom, it's done. I mean, I can do the exact same thing. Let's say I, I didn't even want this clip. I hit boom, it's done. Fills in the space and there goes half of my hook, but I'll hit undo. And if you, like I said, if you guys want these keybinds, go, I'll tag the video right up on the top right. I'll show you all my keybinds I like to do. But for these hook, to make my hook a lot smaller, all I always do is make these like little J hooks or whatever they're called. I don't really know exactly what it's called, but it's technically called like a J hook and an L cook hook or something like that. I just do this. I look at the both the audio waves. I see that this audio wave is ending right here. I see that this is ending all the way over here. So obviously you don't want this blank space right here. To keep your mouth rolling, you can essentially just grab this, keep going to the left, make sure that these audio waves kind of overlap. And then I just like kind of cut this a little bit, just like so, and then bring this one, hold alt. And now when you talk, it'll sound like this. Prove it, I'm gonna be showing. See, it kind of sounded like I never even stopped talking. I'm gonna bring it to the left just a little bit more, just so it kind of keeps going. Again, hold alt and bring it to the right. And now it sounds like this. Prove it, I'm gonna be showing. Perfect. Now I do the exact same thing with the next clip. Instead, instead of going over it, I just bring in the middle. I'm gonna cut this a little bit because it's too long. 
and then I'll overlap this one with this one. So just like so. And now it sounds like this. To a video of me. See, there's no cut. It's just instant me talking. I do this always every single time on my hooks and it just saves a lot of time, especially when you're trying to hook the viewer. Okay, this is the most important part of this entire video. This is how I seriously edit these videos so damn fast just because of the system I created. And the system is super simple and easy to do. It's gonna take time, it's gonna take a little time to set up, but trust me, this little time, the short amount of little time that you are taking to set this up will compound into every single video you take into your future projects and future videos. So, so what I did is I made another project, so make sure you just come up to file, hit new project, and then name it, and put it whatever, and when I come in here, it's gonna blow your fucking mind. So in this project file, I'll just kind of blow this up. You're probably wondering what is all this stuff? Well, these are all the things I use in each and every single one of my videos that I constantly like keep doing and doing and doing. So I thought might as well put these all animations into one single project file. And then every single time I need to go back and use them, I can just come into here, grab it already. It's already cut up for me and boom and blop and bam. So for instance, here's some of my B roll footage that I use to reference other videos. It kind of got fucked up because I accidentally deleted some parts, but you can kind of get the gif. Like these are already automatically with the video description already popping up. The, it's already animated. Everything's here. All my transitions, if I want them in purple, I have them in purple. I usually do purple or yellow. And then I did in yellow too. So like here, and we'll be using this in just a second. Like this is what I do each and every single time to massively improve my editing speed. And when I come over here too, like here are my plugs that I do for my packs. And just like everything, man, everything's here. If I want to plug in some kind of video right here, I already made all these animations. So all I have to do is look into this and boom, I can just come into here, highlight this and stuff. So for instance, my beginning of my video, I always have a zoom with a transition. So I just come in here, I grab the transition that's already done for me. I already grabbed the zoom too. I drag it. Bring into this, the one we're editing, and now boom, now watch. In this video, I'm gonna It's done, that's it. Like, it's that fast, it's crazy. So the next biggest thing I created to automate everything so I don't have to do repeated tasks over and over and over again is I created presets. Now, I've created my own presets, I'll show you guys how you can create your own presets too, but I seriously think that these presets are an absolute no-brainer for YouTube. If you're doing reels, if you're doing both, especially these presets are perfect. They're made for content creators just like you. So the way they work is really simple. Let's say I wanna drop shadow on this before and after because it blends in a little too much. So all I have to do is look at it first, search up drop shadow, and right here you can see I have my text and logo animation presets here, and I have two drop shadow presets that I made in the past, and now it works for me in the future. So for instance, let's say I wanted this one. I just make sure you have both of these highlighted by just left clicking and holding and dragging, grab this, and boom, now they both have drop shadows. Now these are this pack, these packs are not just perfect for drop shadows. They're they're strictly for to create all these animations. So the animations you see right now are all from these packs. So this zoom is these round, the drop shadow on this is and tons of more. I'll show up just some reels right now of what these packs do just for the presets that I use. And I recommend each and every single person to use presets. And if you don't have your own, if you don't wanna make your own, then go and grab mine. They'll be in the link in the description. Now, after I get done with my hook, all I do is strictly figure out what points in my video I need zooms. So for instance, these two points right here, I'm gonna put a adjustment layer to create a zoom. And what I do is obviously I grab an adjustment layer, put it up above just like so. I do the exact same thing right here, just like so, make sure it's spanned out. And then I come into my effects that I have wherever they are. 
and then I go into the zooms. Here's where I can use some of my zooms. And all I do is highlight both of these. I pick out what zoom I want. I always like to do this one, 100 to 110, so I just grab that. And now when I'm talking right here, there is a subtle zoom for both of the spots. At least create your own LUTs, man. At the end of the day, you just need some LUTs that work for you. And the like, you just need to make presets and your entire workflow plus this other project automation I showed you will drastically increase. It's a super no brainer. Now, after all I have that done, I do two more things and I'm done with this video. That's how quickly this shit gets done. I come into here just like we did before. I figure out what I need to grab. So for instance, I'm sure I'm gonna be grabbing one of these. I actually, no, I'm not. This is not that video. I'm gonna come over here to my transitions and I'm just gonna grab like, I don't know. I usually just grab like four or five of them plop them onto my footage and then kind of zoom in here, figure out what spots I need. So for instance, this needs a transition. Also right here needs a transition, grab these, bring them over here. The transition needs to be right here and here. And now boom, watch this. When I align them, they'll be instantly done. I don't need to come into the opacity and look at the opacity and changes the screen. It's already screened and the sound effect with this transition is already turned down, so I don't need to mess with any of that. Awesome, now that I have majority of everything done, all I have to do is my sound design, and then I'll show you my export settings that I do too, and we are done with this video. Now, I do the exact same thing with all my sounds, those sounds I use 24 seven, and the music I use too, I have them down here in the project file that we talked about earlier that you just come back to and grab and drop into your other layer. So for instance, I have my risers right here that's in my rise or in my sound effect pack. You guys can grab if you want. I can just grab here. They're a super no brainer. They're yeah, they're just a no brainer. I don't need to talk about it anymore. They're just, they are. So I just grab them. I usually put them in the beginning of my stuff like right here, right here, just like so. And then these are done. So. My sound effects are already done. They're, I don't need to mess with how loud they are if they're too loud. I already have them perfectly made. And then the next thing I always do is grab the music I love to use. This is the music I like to use and I can just drag it, drop it. It's already made especially for me. I length it out. Sometimes I have longer videos, so I just go with that. If not, I just hit here and cut it just like so. And now my music and my entire video is already done. So for the export, I always do is I come down to the last part of my video and I come like right here, hit your out points. And then, ooh, I actually got it first try. That's never what happens. Usually it's like over here. I always go about one frame before everything cuts off just so then if you go right here, you can see there's gonna be a black bar or black, like the video will go black. We don't want that. So just grab the out and move it one frame forward and you'll always have me talking. Now for my export settings, I don't go crazy or anything. I usually just do the right here, the 4k, but I do use a custom just because the 4k doesn't add certain things. And the 4k, if I click on the 4k, you can see, make sure this is on source and in and out. Make sure you're putting in the right location. I do this constantly and then I can't find the video and then I get pissed off. But let me just put in the right folder right now because it's not. And for this video, make sure that when you come in here, see the 4K is not right. I want to make sure that render at maximum depth is on so you get the best quality. Same with maximum render quality. Make sure you do that. And then you come down here, VBR pass is at 80. I usually either do 80 or 120. I'm not the guy to know about bit rate and everything like that. I just listen to what other people tell me and they know a lot more about this shit. So I'm just a listener. <laughs> then the next thing I do is because for some reason, Premiere Pro, when you export your videos, it changes the color grade for some reason. So the way to get rid of this is to go to the Lumetri look slash LUT, click on here, custom, and I will leave this, it's an absolutely free LUT. I got it from Sony's website, I'm pretty sure, or Premiere Pro's website, whatever. It's a LUT that essentially corrects all of that and gives you just a little more stuff. It dulls the contrast and everything, which is weird. So this is the one right here. I'll just double click it and now it looks a little darker. That's completely fine. When you export it, it'll look exactly like how you put it in Premiere Pro. And if you wanna edit your Instagram Reel hooks in just seconds, 
I'll leave my video right over here. Click that video, it'll teach you exactly how I do that using my systems. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.